Are you ready for corporate worship part two? Hey, I moved my chair a little bit. Isn't the lighting a little bit better this way? Seems to me like it is, but I'm going to try this and see. Um, hey, and also, how do you like my um, Blue Lives Matter shirt? My son gave me this. He's a cop, and so I'll wear it for in his honor. Um, corporate worship, the fivefold ministry, apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. Um, and I also think it's really important that we say, because I've heard the teaching that says otherwise, that the head of the church is Jesus. Um, there is a, a teaching on submission and obedience that has gotten um, out of line that um, where they put one person in charge and they say that that person is like your Moses. They are the head of the church and that everything must be submitted to them. You got churches where people are submitted for everything that they do, every financial thing that they do, uh, buying a car, a house, whatever. They got to get it submitted and prayed over and have to get approval before they can do those things. And <clears throat> that's a little out of line too. Um, that's, these are the kinds of things that happen when you don't have a five-fold ministry, each providing balance for, for the other. The head of the church is not a pastor. The head of the church is not an apostle. It's not a prophet or evangelist. The head of the church is Jesus. And Jesus gave these gifts to the church um, for the equipping of the saints for the work of ministry. And so this five-fold ministry is appropriate church structure. Read it in uh, Ephesians chapter 4. And hopefully the church will be moving more and more in that direction. I do know of some churches in Dallas. I knew, do know some fairly prominent churches in the United States that do understand the structure and are operating in it. It actually is a, a blessing um, to have support so that you don't have one person out there responsible for everything, but uh, you have a five-fold ministry team working within the church and, 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 and working that way. If you really look back at the apostles, um, and the way that the apostles uh, worked in the book of Acts. You see the apostles coming together and submitting to one another too. I hear this argument, I've heard this argument, of who was the head apostle, who was the head? Because see, this whole idea that we have an in, in, in inappropriate structure of churches in uh, America today looks to the book of Acts to give them a head. Um, and, and who was the head of the church? Who was the head apostle? And they try to identify a head apostle. Well, if you really read it, um, you will find that, that when they came together as apostles, the Holy Spirit moved and someone would speak uh, under the anointing of the Holy Spirit and the others would recognize that. I remember when they were recognized and submit to that. Um, understand the truth that was coming out of someone and, 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 and good proper leadership submits to that leadership and, and joins together around it. Remember with the argument on circumcision, it was James at the time that stood up in the power of the Holy Spirit and spoke the truth, and the rest of them all submitted to it. Does that mean James was the head apostle? Uh, in that particular meeting, they recognized that Jesus was speaking through him, so they submitted to the gift in James. But the head of the church in the book of Acts also was Jesus. Jesus is the head. All of us are members of the body. So anyway, that's something, something pray, Lord, I pray that you would restore uh, the church to the place um, that is scriptural according to your scripture in the book of Acts. I pray that you would do that. Show us that proper structure. Um, and I give, you, I give you thanks for that, Lord. Um, so, so that's a part of it. What does that have to do with cor corporate worship? Well, leadership is important in co corporate worship. And what I would encourage church leaders to do is to recognize gifting and praise leaders or worship leaders. Um, worship leading, the, the position of the worship leader is a very important position within the church if you want your church to uh, move in the, in, in the Holy Spirit and to worship in spirit and in truth. Corporate worship is powerful. Corporate worship, um, you, can, you can have the Holy Spirit come and abide with you in private worship and anoint you and, and visit you. Uh, and, and it's amazing. When that happens in a corporate setting, it can be... Um, it just, just incredible. God begins to move a people, not just a person, in a certain direction. He begins to speak and anoint uh, together in a, in a corporate setting where the Holy Spirit shows up uh, in power. And, and I think for um, that is the intent of us gathering together, isn't it? For us to hear of the Holy Spirit and for the Holy Spirit to lead us. Um, and for that to happen, I do believe that one of the most important um, 
functions or, or positions within a church is finding the, the appropriate, the right worship leader. Um, so that that worship leader can be uh, kind of the director of the Holy Spirit for a worship service. But even worship leaders, just as there's fivefold, should understand gifting within the worship team, the choir, the, 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 however um, the church works in worship. So um, I would encourage you, um, what are you looking for in a worship leader? Pastors, teachers, uh, evangelists, prophets, uh, apostles, what are you looking for in your uh, worship leader? Remember that a worship leader should be one that is in tune with the Holy Spirit and understands where the Holy Spirit is understands and is in touch with the leading of the Holy Spirit so that the church itself can be in unity with the Holy Spirit. As opposed to what you see most often is a preset agenda and then a prayer to ask the Holy Spirit to anoint a preset agenda set by man. Oftentimes you'll have a pastor that's, that is, is, is uh, planning a message and feels a message in their heart and they will tell a praise leader what the message is and to give me these songs around the message so that the Holy Spirit can anoint the worship to anoint the message. And that's, that's really kind of backwards. Um, if you trust that your message is by the Holy Spirit, then trust a worship leader to trust the Holy Spirit and follow the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit will say through worship what the Holy Spirit needs to have said. The, remember, the Holy Spirit only speaks what Jesus tells him to. So uh, I would encourage those leaders within the church to find a sensitive, when I say sensitive, I mean one sensitive to the move of the Holy Spirit, a worship leader, and that should be their first prerequisite, and then trust them to follow the Holy Spirit in a worship service. Uh, the primary, um, primary thing we should look for in a worship leader is the ability to be in touch with the Holy Spirit and to follow him. Um, not the best music teacher, not the one with the most musical knowledge, not the one with the greatest voice or the greatest range or the best instrumentalist or the one that writes the best songs. Those kinds of things are, are nice musical qualities. But remember, um, our musical expertise doesn't impress God. God has angels around his throne that, that can, can never are off pitch never make a mistake and can provide perfect sound, musical sound in heaven. What God wants is hearts. See, the difference, what makes us different from angels, if you take the best singer in the world and put him next to one of God's angels and have a praise competition to see who has the best voice, there's not a man in the world, woman in the world that would win that competition. But what people have that angels don't have is choice. What people have that angels don't have is the spirit. In God's likeness, we are created with the spirit. And when we choose to give our spirit over in worship to God, that far supersedes a sound that a voice can make. When God sees a people rending their hearts and delivering their spirits and their hearts over to God. When God sees that, that will move mountains um, as opposed to just a beautiful orchestration of some musical piece. And I think what the church has gotten into is uh, what I call entertainment. We'll find some great song somewhere off of YouTube or off of some album. We'll make copies of it send it out to the band, let everybody learn their part, and then try to replicate that sound and sing the song, oftentimes with the same number of voices, the same number of choruses, going through the bridge the same number of times. Even the improvisation of the lead singer oftentimes is singing the exact same thing that was sung on the tape. Um, and so there's absolutely no leading of the Holy Spirit. Instead, the opposite is true. We sing a song and ask the Holy Spirit to anoint it, as opposed to us really following the Holy Spirit in the direction of the Holy Spirit in service. And so um, that's the thing that I would say. Uh, worship leaders, trust your spirit. Follow the Holy Spirit for the sake of the cor corporate group. 
What is it that the Holy Spirit is wanting to do in a service? Um, and, and, and to the team, one of the other major things I see that gets, gets off on worship teams is to the worship team. Who is the Holy Spirit flowing through? Who has the spotlight? Um, oftentimes I see drums leading a worship service and everybody else is following the tempo of a drum or a bass leading the service or a lead guitar leading a service and everybody else all of a sudden follows into that. A drum, a lead guitar, a bass, every instrumentalist and every vocalist should be in tune to the spirit of the leader. Because if that leader is following the Holy Spirit, everybody needs to come into unity with that leader. And there's sometimes the Holy Spirit might want one song sung uh, um, with a lot of energy and the next time sung with broken hearts. Same song. There may be a time when the Holy Spirit is really leaning on certain scripture, certain things that Jesus once said, and may stay on a chorus over and over and over and over again, and then maybe just want to have a settling in the middle of it where people can just pause and think and then come back into it, rather than doing it the way it's been done on a video or on, a, on an album. And so it is the worship leader that leads uh, the corporate group into what the Holy Spirit um, is doing. And at the same time, all the members of the body come together and join in unity with that. We understand where the direction of the leader is. And one of the things I see from uh, people in uh, corporate worship is oftentimes people, a, a number of things, people get uncomfortable when the Holy Spirit begins to show up. And what happens when people get uncomfortable is they want to get out. Oftentimes it's in silence. Silence in a church can be very uncomfortable to people who aren't comfortable to resting in the Holy Spirit. So what do we do? What is, what is it that we do? We'll shout, we'll holler, we'll do something to interrupt that silence. One of the things churches have gotten to do, is, since they don't know what to do with quiet time, as we begin to just listen to the Holy Spirit and wait on Him, one of the things people do is after every song's over, they clap. Part of the clap is to say, thank you, praise team, that sounded really good. Some want to say, no, it's praise, we're clapping to God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God, for that song. Uh, but oftentimes the true reason why we're clapping is because we don't know what to do with silence. The song ends, uh, the Holy Spirit wants to just kind of hover for a minute. He's working in hearts. He's wanting to just kind of have people muse on what, what he's saying through worship at that moment. Um, and then people get uncomfortable, don't know what to do. I've been in ch church services before where the Holy Spirit has, has hovered in a congregation uh, in excess of two, three, four, five minutes of silence. And we as a, as, as a corporate body have to be in tune enough to the flow of the Holy Spirit that we don't interrupt that. And we have to also, I think, trust the leadership, the leader, and, and, and if, if, if we're in a, in a thanksgiving uh, season of giving thanks, then let our hearts give thanks. If we're in a time of just really sensitive worship, uh, then some, maybe the drums don't need to play. Maybe the bass doesn't need to play. Maybe we just need to be in a sensitive place. Same song that we've done before, but maybe this time the Holy Spirit is in a sensitive place. So allow the Holy Spirit to move, and then as a congregation, we join in that sensitivity. And the next time, it may be bringing the house down with cymbals and clashes. Where is the Holy Spirit and what is he leading us to? Um, to worship in spirit and truth is for us to surrender ourselves to the Holy Spirit and join in with that. As the Holy Spirit hears what Jesus speaks and the Holy Spirit begins to minister that. That's true uh, function of, of the body of Christ in the Holy Spirit. But oftentimes um, people get uncomfortable and, and, and begin to do um, things that disrupt or bring attention to themselves. Uh, and we are a body. Uh, we're not looking uh, for a spotlight. What we're looking for is for the Holy Spirit to minister to us. So, Father, I thank you for your goodness to us. And I thank you, Father, for praise and worship leaders with a sensitive heart that follow you, uh, that are in tune with your Holy Spirit and lead us to that place of worship. Father, may, um, may we see this more and more where your worship just springs up where you come and you speak to us and you heal and you do miracles during our worship service. We submit and surrender ourselves to you in that. 
in Jesus' name.